Hello and welcome to North 100 Showdown, a Canadian Highlander Throwdown. I love that intro. It's, it's good. My name is Serge. I've got a wheeler. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Today, we're going to play a best of three, or maybe more, of our favorite format, Canadian Highlander. If you don't know what that is, there's going to be a little video in the description below. And if you want to know what we play today, you want to see the lists, more information in the deck list below. Reminder that everything we do is also brought to you by you with your support at the Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. I got merfolk. I got fish. This is a blue splashing green deck. It's sort of mid-rangey. And the way I like to describe it is it's not tempo. It's not aggro. It's momentum. It's the sort of deck that once it gets established and it starts going and going and going, you better watch out because it's hard to stop. My points, Mox, Mox, Mana Drain, GTA, True Name. Mm. What do you got? Well, Serge, frequently every now and then I think of the glorious fruit of the noble hen. Eggs, eggs, E double G S, eggs. I, this is a deck that you're really known for, right? I may have made the deck and <laughs> have played it God knows how many times. It's probably my most winningest deck in the format. Maybe Jeskai, but it's up there. It's, mm. it's my baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my baby. I play cheap artifacts uh, that are eggs, uh, that draw cards by sacrificing themselves. I do some Toyerian Academy stuff. Sure. And uh, there's a certain pointed card in here that's pretty important. Uh, speaking of which, my points are Toyerian Academy, yeah. Transmute Artifact, Ugh. Crop Rotation, uh, and this little card called Black Lotus. <laughs> oh, you're on Bomberman! Yeah. Oh! Yeah. yeah. We'll yeah. see if we get a chance to show that off. Hopefully. All right, so I won the die roll. Mm -hmm. We both kept sevens. Mm -hmm. You ready to did it did 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 a duel? Uh, I'm glad you said, didn't say did it did 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 it die. Uh, because, yes. Okay. All shall right. we? Island. Uh huh. Now, I had a while to think about my opening turn here, and uh -huh. I went back and forth, and I hope I don't get punished for this. Chrome Mox, Exiling Counterspell. That's worrisome, yeah. It's bold, right? Yeah. Into GTA. Okay. So yeah. my, my options are, do I keep Counterspell up? I don't know how explosive you are, and I know there's like a key piece that I can hit there, mm -hmm. or do I apply the pressure? And I went for pressure because I'm on the play. That's fair. Pressure is usually the best thing uh, to do against combo in general, yeah. especially a deck like Eggs where... Um, You're just going to drop your hand. Well, the joke <laughs> is that my deck's filled with bad cards, yes. right? Like, the cards don't do that much, and so it's hard. Like, everything's replaceable, basically. Mm -hmm. I guess the, the key thing in this matchup to highlight is going to be trying to identify like the house of cards, the key things to dismantle this, because there is redundancy, but there are some key players. Yeah. See the sign on. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to play a Terrarian. Comes into play tapped. I can pay two, sack it to filter into two mana of any color, and when it goes to the graveyard from play, I draw a card. Yeah. Uh, Mox Opal. Oh, good. All right. So I have Metalcraft now. Yeah. Uh, Brainstone. They put Brainstorm on an egg. Go. Yeah. Good start. Good start. Thanks. I hate it. I'm going to play a Waterlogged Grove. Mm -hmm. uh, two mana. I'm going to cast a Silvergill Adept. Ooh, okay. And I'm going to reveal the Merfolk in my hand as Chimera. Okay. So slow down here. So this is a two mana two one. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. But as an additional cost to play it, I either have to reveal a merfolk or pay three. Yeah. I top deck that. Otherwise, I would have sequenced differently. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. And so then you draw. You, yeah, and I draw off that because this would have been a better turn one, and yeah. you know, that would have been <laughs> turn four, and the counter spell suddenly yeah. very awkward. But you know how it is. Otherwise, I'm playing Chimera, but I have to sequence. Anyways, you don't mm -hmm. need to get too into We'll the... get to Chimera eventually. <laughs> yeah, go to you. <laughs> uh, untap. Draw. Remember when I said we'd get to Chimera eventually? You can't possibly kill me this turn. No, well, I could, but I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> or rather, my deck is capable of Okay, it. I'm good. If you can, go for it. I'm not, no. Okay, no. all right. Not with this draw. Yeah. Stop threatening to kill me and kill me! <laughs> Uh, it is a little tricky. How ham do I want to go? Relatively ham. 
Uh, I'm going to cast Sylvan Scrying. That's a problem. I get yep. to find Here a land. Here comes Academy. I'm going to find Academy. Yeah. Uh, it only taps for four currently. <laughs> <laughs> Just Academy things. You know. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. That's, that's, that's like the, a fairer Academy. Yeah. Canadian Highlander players have a bit of a warped kind of take on Academy. Because, like, do you know how much mana this needs to add for it to be broken? Three? Uh, two. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. more. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. like. Um, but can say, like three, you can start doing infinite shenanigans. Yeah. But I guess two. Yeah, two, two no is, downside. Two is still like cheap. Ancient two mana, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Normally, but you have to pay two life for that kind of acceleration. The way that I talk about Academy with this deck is I have a couple of different points. I have two, four, nine, and infinite. Those are the break points. <laughs> Those are yeah, the like, yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, two, good enough. Um, so this adds four. Yep. <laughs> uh, I'm going to add four blue. I'm actually going to filter this. All right. Uh, Let's get I, you the dice. Thank you. Uh, into a green and a blue. So I have three. Well, I should actually do a, a, a white and a green. All right. I should be I'm put those good two about to the this. side. Yeah. Uh, to draw a card. Oh. Well, we'll get to that later. Uh, I'm going to play Oko. No! More like no Ko. What do you mean? Uh, Elk. Elk. Mm, Elk. I'm just going to make a food token, actually. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I'll pass the turn. All right. So the other reason I kept this hand, not just the counterspell, was because I had this Wasteland. Mmm, that's a good one. Yeah, and I tried to bait it a little bit because I could have played Wasteland earlier in case he had it. But I think, I think the correct thing is to go Shields Down, let the Academy player get the Academy out, and then hit it, as yes. opposed to letting them have the information. So yeah, Wasteland's going to take out the Academy. Okay. Uh, do you have a food token? I couldn't find my food token. I do have a food token. I think I gave you my food token. That's fair. Here's a food token Thank for you. Thank you. Yeah, you usually want to save your Wasteland for Academy, if you can, in this match. Yeah. Uh, Gta on the Adept. Sure. Uh, put two damage on Oko. Oko goes to four. Gta counters. Four Oko. Four Oko. Go ahead. My favorite drink, the four Oko. Interesting. Go to play a tropical island. Yeah. Um. Make that into a thing. That's pretty good. I think I actually don't hate leaving that Gta as a Gta. How do I get back my academy? I do have a couple of ways. I'm going to make another food token. Mm, okay. And then I'm going to pass. Island. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and kill Oko. So attack Oko. I am going to allow it. All right. Pump, pump. Make this a 6 5. Thinking. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Uh, put two counters on Gta. Mm -hmm. Second main, I'm going to cast Chimera. Kumena. Kumena, uh, Tyrant of Orzalka. So three mana, two, four, legendary Merfolk Shaman. Uh, tap another Merfolk you control, becomes unblockable. Tap three Merfolk, draw a card. Tap five Merfolk, put a plus one, plus one count on each Merfolk. But yeah. I am going to take one because my only green source is from the waterlogged grove sure. here. So I'm at 19. And I'm going to go ahead and say go. End of turn. I'm going to cast Word of Invention, improvising for three. So I get to find any artifact. You get free Crucible. Or is it in your deck? It is. Yeah, that's unfortunate. You think that's unfortunate? I'm shuffling away a Black Lotus that was on top. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Yeah, this deck it can go extremely all in on doing combo stuff, but also it plays the long game pretty well because all of your 
like uh, normal academy decks, right? They play talismans, mana yeah. rocks, those kind of things. Um, I mostly get my mana from the fact that I just have a lot of artifacts and that they're cheap. So all my eggs and my baubles and whatnot. Um, and so my mana rocks draw me cards when I don't need them anymore. Yeah, and it lets you sort of like cycle things. I'm shocked that I got to take your academy out for a turn and turn. <laughs> that was all I got. You didn't even have to brainstorm rock for it. No. Draw. Uh, I'm going to play this Toyer in Academy for my graveyard. <sighs> Taps for six now? Uh, yep. Uh, okay. Well, I only have one wasteland wheeler. <laughs> it'll tap for a little more. Uh, I'm going to tap three. And I'm going to, well, that's probably greedy, actually. You know me, I don't like to be greedy. Yeah. Um, I'm going to tap this immediately, I guess, uh, for one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so I'm going to have three blue floating. And I will play Sahili Sublime Artificer. So it comes into play with five counters. Whenever I cast a uh, non-creature spell, I make a 1-1 one, one servo, and then I can pay two to make target artifact I control become a copy of another target artifact I control. Yep. Hmm. So I'm going to use one of these to play Scrabbling Claws. Uh, this lets me tap to exile a card from your graveyard or pay one and sack it to exile a card from your graveyard. And I Man, make... it sure would have been great to have that counter spell right about now. That that's, was... that's one of the, like, okay, so the, the key spells so far have been Were of Invention and Sahili. Mm -hmm. Probably Sahili more so than Were. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sahili gets out of control. Yeah, that card is not okay. And it also synergizes very well with Utilarian Academy. I do have some good news, though. Don't have much gas? So, well, love to hear it. No, I might get us to both draw a bunch of cards. Oh, okay. In fact, well, do I need to? Not really. I'm going to crack this brainstone. I cost Using one, the two. The uh, two. Okay. So I had two blue floating. I'm going to crack this brainstone. So I draw three cards and I put two back on top. Yep. So one, two, three. Oh dear. Oh dear for me or for you? For you. Oh good. Uh, that's pretty good. I want that. Oh. Um, I'm going to put. Jesus. Well, I could draw a card. Uh, I make a copy of that. I'm going to put these two on top. Okay. Um, I will down tick Sahili to have one of my food tokens become a copy of. See the sign on. Sure. So you have plus one mana now. Yeah. Uh, we only brought one food token, but I'm only going to really represent it for this turn. Uh, so I have one untapped one and yep. one tapped one here. So you uh, got a blue floating. So I'll add a blue. Um, you have one card in your graveyard. Cracked. Crack it's just wasteland. I'm going to crack this to exile that card uh, and draw a card. Then I'm going to tap two and play a. Moon Silver Key Sahili Trigger. I make another servo. Which one's Moon Silver Key? Uh, I can pay one, tap, and sack it to search my library for an artifact card with a mana ability or a basic land. Mm. And I'm going to pass after that. How many cards in hand? Three. I'm going to cast a Merfolk Trickster. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to tap one of your servos. Okay. Um, I'd then like to use Gta to kill one of your servos. Okay. And like to go to attacks. Yep. Uh, I'm going to attack you with Kamena, mm -hmm. and I'm going to attack uh, your Planeswalker with the Silver Gill Adept. Before blocks. <clears throat> Add a white. I'll cast Enlightened Tutor. Trigger. 
Make a circle. Oh, it's any non-creature spell. I thought it was just artifact spells. No, any non-creature. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I am going to put a Thopter Foundry on top of my deck. Oh, good. That is, uh, so for, I guess it's hybrid white-black, but it's going to be white in this game. Uh, and a blue, it's an artifact where I can pay one, sacrifice a non-token artifact to make a 1-1 blue Thopter artifact creature token and gain one life. All right, uh, before blockers, I'm going to cast Odawara for three, because I have a legendary creature, paying a life yeah. uh, to bounce your untapped servo, because you have no other mana, right? Yeah. 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 And then I'll pump this so I can clear. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, you got to get the Sahili off the board no matter what. So you'll take two there. Yes. I got and I'm two. now Hackbend. Okay. So you've got a, yeah, put the Thopter Foundry on top. Uh, go. Uh, untap. I've got two of these. I'll draw this. So as long as you don't have sword in hand, it's not too out of control for me. Don't you dare tell me you have sword in hand. You had to say it, Serge. Yeah, you had to say it. Um, I am going to tap two. Yeah. To play Sword of the Meat. No, I'm... How? <laughs> I... oh. uh, I'm going to tap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, eight blue. I'm going to go down to seven blue. Yeah. And crack my Moon Silver Key. So it lets me find a basic land or an artifact with a mana ability. So Black Lotus is a good one, but do you know what is also a mana ability? Do you have the uh, untapped land? No. I have Kirk Clan Ironworks, which has a mana ability of sacrifice an artifact, add two mana to your mana pool. This card should not exist. <laughs> Uh, I am going to go from seven to three mana to cast Car Clan Ironworks. Yep. Um, You're fine. Three mana. Spoiler: the game is over. It is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am going to add a uh, white mana yep. and use a blue to play Thopter Foundry. Now, how could I be dead here, Wheeler? Thank you for asking, Serge. Mm. Uh, here's a cool little combo for everybody at home. Mm. Uh, let's pay one mana mm -hmm. to start things off, to sacrifice my Sword of the Meek here um, to make a Thopter token and gain one life. So I go up to 19. I now have a 1-1 one, one Thopter coming into play. Sword of the Meek's in my graveyard, and it sees the Thopter come into play. And so Sword of the Meek now comes into play, equipping uh, itself to this. Now I sack my Thopter to Kark Clan Ironworks to add two colorless mana to my mana pool. I then use one of that mana to sack Sword of the Meek uh, to make a Thopter, which repeats this process. So now, again, I get a Thopter with a sword, and I gain a life, but now I'm up one colorless. I'm going to do this until I have enough colorless mana so that I can stop sacrificing my Thopters and just pump it into Sword of the Meek. So spoiler alert for those at home, I gain infinite life and make infinite Thopters. Now that in and of itself is not a win condition, but mm -hmm. my deck wins through life. Yeah. So without having a combo, without having an alternate win condition, I cannot win, and thus I'll concede. Okay. <laughs> You're not on the Thassa's Oracle build? I, yeah, yeah, that merfolk. I thought I did a pretty good job of fighting that. Is it? Did you get lucky in those draws? You felt It felt like you had a higher than average draws with like fixing, like getting your cradle back out and also having the sword in. Like that felt, that felt like two very good draws. So here's the thing about this deck. Yeah. Is that uh, everything works together. Oh, okay. And so everything is, I mean, obviously having a way to find out my, find my academy is pretty good. Yeah. Right. Uh, and having a Mox Opal makes it a lot of a, a, a much faster start. Sure, like that wasn't unreasonable. But everything, no. it's everything everywhere all at once. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just feel like sometimes you're sitting across from eggs is a little bit more dirtling. Like, I felt you only had to crack three eggs to make that particular omelet. Right, yes. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes you're just like, and, and that's a product of the past three years of magic. Okay. Also just meaning like, 
you'll run into situations where you go, oh, Moon Silver Key finds everything that's broken. Yeah. Or, oh, Oko provides enough of a buffer I that I can... I... Yeah. It's just like two tutors and quite a few live draws there. And it's like, dang. Three tutors. Or three tutors. Word. Sylvan's oh, Crying right. and Lightning Tutor Word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This deck can do some pretty gross stuff. Yeah? Pretty no, gross. that was great. What did you think of my on-the-play ditching the counterspell there? So... So I could yeah. have my GJ online immediately and start start trying to fight through your stuff. What was your what was your hand? My hand was three lands, mm -hmm. Chrome Mox, mm -hmm. Counterspell, GJ, Kamena. I might mulligan that hand. I mean, if you, I would keep it. Not knowing what my opponent's playing, like blind. Right, but knowing against eggs, it's not quite enough there. I'd keep it blind if you. If, like, this is round four of a tournament and you know that I've been playing eggs or whatever, I might ship it. You don't love it? Um, I do like taking a, the pressure line, though. It's a little slow. If it's if it's too... If I had another spell in there, like if I had the Silvergill Catcher mm. instead of that land, I think that's a snap keep. I liked it better than sixes, and you like the pressure line, yeah. Yeah, I think you... Most people just get all disruption. They're like, this is how I'm going to beat combo. And it's like, no, you beat combo by reducing their life total. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So the right play on the wrong hand. Yeah. Interesting. I think okay. I try to find a different hand, but if that's like the hand that you have, then I like going for a more pressure oriented draw. Sure. All right, let's look at these sevens. Only one land. I'm going to mulligan. Okay. Unfortunate. This hand, or this deck does only play 30 lands. Or I think I'm at 31. But, yeah. It's okay. While you're doing that, mm -hmm. I need to I need to look up a rules thing on one of my particular cards here. Okay. I think it works the way I want to, but I just want to make sure when we get to it. Uh, old cards. One of my favorite judge calls that happened all the time at Hyler Knights was, can I get an errata for this card? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can I see the oracle text on this card? Yeah. Uh, you are good. I will keep this. All right, I'm on the play. And um, I do have to put one back. Oh, right, of course. Let's get this going. My turn one is Tidal Warrior. Mm -hmm. And I like this. I was looking at the island ruling here specifically about like other types, yeah. right? So like, can I mic with your, your artifact count? Can I do all sorts of stuff? Mm -hmm. This actually has a, a lot of application. Maybe that's the word to look for. It's a lot better than it looks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, go to you. Uh, I'll play uh, Volcanic Island. Mm. I will cast a Sungrass Egg. So this is an egg. It filters for green and white for two, and I draw a card. Uh, and I'm going to suspend a Lotus Bloom. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. Good start. Uh, I've got this Prismatic Vista. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and crack this right now. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and get me... N is actually really tough if I want double blue or if I want my green source early. Uh -huh. Blue, blue. Like to cut. There you go. All right. Attack you for one. Uh, 19. Umezawa's Jite. Mm, I've heard of that one. Yeah, it's uh, it's not bad. Go ahead. Two. Draw. Go. Interesting. 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 Equip Jite. Mm -hmm. Attack for one. 
18. GT counters. Yep. Go. Trigger. I also missed my land drop. Okay. <laughs> the GT makes it a little. Eh, I'll keep my secrets. Go ahead. All right. Untap. Untap. Draw for the turn. Attack. Mm -hmm. Any effects? For five. Okay. Go 13. GT trigger. Mm -hmm. Pass. Upkeep, try to cast my Lotus Bloom. Remand. <laughs> yeah, this is like this is like the dirtiest counter spell you can do to the suspend spells. Remand. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, draw for turn. Yeah. I'll suspend this. <laughs> Go. Oh no. I'll attack you for five. Yeah, I go to eight. Pass. Uh, attack for two. Draw. Yeah, yeah draw step. I'm going to click you. OK. So why did I keep this hand? Yeah. Uh, I have a Tomashi, which goes uh, not infinite, but it's pretty darn good with any Lotus. OK. I got a Fabricate. I got a Reshape. Uh, I have a Sylvan Scrying. Mm -hmm. I have a second Sunrise. And I have three two mana. We call them nuts. Yeah, I actually don't think I take anything here because your hand is currently uncastable and uncrackable. You keep it and you kill me. Yeah. 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 I'm dead. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have exactly eight for the turn after this, and you don't have an out. Yeah. This is a bit of a risky keep, but I keep I, I keep this hand in tournament. Yeah. 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 Because if so, the way that Tomashi works too with this is that. Uh, I can pay X and a white to return a land I control to return an artifact with mana value X or less from the graveyard. So it works well with this. So I just get to... Uh, and I can do it as many times as I'd like. So why does it go infinite with this particular one? Well, it goes infinite with any of them. Okay. This is just one of the many. I, sorry, can you explain why you can go infinite with this? That it doesn't... The, sure. The suspend and, and CMC part? It's just because it's a, a lotus. Mm -hmm. It costs zero. So all I have to do is pay a white and return a land I control to return an artifact or enchantment with mana value zero, basically. Oh, and you're graveyard. not casting this. You just put it right into play and it just crack goes it. back that's, into play. That's the part. Sorry. Yeah. I was just like, hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's, so that's great. Between that and like having access to, uh, I mean, if I get to reshape into Lotus, yeah. then I can... Yeah, just not, do it immediately. Again, it's not infinite, but yeah. you can you can turn one land into six mana, yeah. right? And then your hand, then your then the race is on, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you got to keep hands like that. Oh no, absolutely. Yeah, I, I definitely did you dirty with that remand though. Yeah, the remand. <laughs> I mean, you are a blue deck, yeah. so it's always a little risky. But like, uh, cowardice is not for combo players. You know, make them have it. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, make them have it. You know. Okay. And there, for the people watching, it can be done. You can win a game against eggs. <laughs> against combo. <laughs> I don't know. I think sometimes people see like the game one, and you're like, man, Surge had three disruptive moments there, yeah. right? Cleared two walkers, and still. Like, I fought through an Oko and a Sahili <laughs> in that game, and then died to Thopter Sword. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I'm doing good. I'm fighting the real threat. You're like, you fool. You were, <laughs> you were dead all along. Yeah. I had not even shown my threat. <laughs> oh, you're good. I will go first. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck, friend. Hmm. I will keep. Same. Good luck to you. Good luck. Misty Rainforest, go. No turn one. Oh my god, my first turn is so hard to sequence. Mm -hmm. Go. <laughs> Sorry, that's really hard. Try, you have no idea how no, many no, different I, lines went through yeah, my head. Yeah, no, I. You, you see Island Pass, but there, <laughs> there's like seven other lines there. So brave, so powerful. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna fetch. Fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I will get a tropical island 
and I'll play a Moon Silver Key. Uh, which one is that? That's the one that lets me find an artifact with a mana ability or a basic land. I will daze that. Okay. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, and then that'll be a pass. Three, four, five, six, seven. Island go. <laughs> okay. Much see? easier the second time around. Yeah, well, see, that's a weird play pattern you're thinking there, right? Like, do I play a different land so that I can keep the days up? Do I, you know... If I do end up dazing, how much does it set me back? How do I evaluate the threat level? Yeah. Uh, draw. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to play an Inventor's Fair. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to play a Walking Ballista on one. That's fine. And I'm going to play a Moss Fire Egg. Go ahead. Uh, forest. Mm -hmm. Silver Gill Adept. Yep. Uh, revealing Merfolk Skydiver. Ooh, okay. Uh, drawing a card here. Mm -hmm. Would you like to kill it? No, not yet. Go. Fair. Draw. That's an interesting draw. Um... That's a really interesting draw. I'm going to play a Buried Ruin. Yeah. I'm going to add a counter to Walking Ballista. And I'm going to shoot that. And then I'm going to attack you for one. 19. Go ahead. <clears throat> Back to basics. Ooh, OK. Seems good. I'm going to crack this Scalding Tarn for a basic island here. Mm -hmm. I forgot I put that in there. <laughs> this is significantly better than the time on the Friday Night Paper Fight I played this deck against Alex, who was on Mono Red Goblins. Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so back to basics. Non-basics do not untap. I'm going to play a Manamo, School at Water's Edge, yeah. and I'll attack for one. I go to 17. Go ahead. Draw. This is going to be an interesting choice for you. Is it? Crap. Merfolk Skydiver. So 1-1 one, one Flyer, but when it enters the battlefield, I'd like to try and put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. That's OK. All right. Apparently not that interesting of a choice. <laughs> Go. This is going to be a hard game. Um, Academy. Ooh, you had you just had the Academy? So you get to use it once. Yeah. Wow. I hate that for me. <laughs> um. <laughs> so it currently adds two mana? Two. Yeah. Tough. I'm going to pass the turn. Thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. 
That's a very good draw. Uh, Chrome Box, mm -hmm. exiling Cold Eye Selkie. Oh, yeah. So that now taps for a green and a blue. Gonna attack you for two in the air. 17. Pass. <clears throat> Savannah. I mean, nothing like... There's definitely those times where you play a back to basics and your opponent never does anything again, you're like, great. Or they rip land, land, land off the top, as we see here. Why did you pass? Because I have instant Quit. spell interaction. Oh, I know. I'm going to pass the turn. I'm going to flash in the whole breacher. Yep. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Untap. Untap. Draw for the turn. I'm going to cast a Deep Root Elite. Mm -hmm. So two mana, one, one, whenever another merfolk enters the battlefield, you may put a plus one, plus one counter on a merfolk that you control. Yep. I'm going to attack you for two in the air. Pass. End of turn. I'm going to channel Odawara to bounce your back to basics. That's an activated ability. It's not a spell. Correct. Where's my stifles? Where's my stifles? Mm -hmm. All right, it's in my hand. Uh, untap. Draw? Yes. That is an interesting draw. That is a very interesting draw. Holy we got ourselves a game again here. Oh, no. Yeah. How many cards? You have a bajillion? I have five cards in hand currently. You know one of them is back to basics. Crucible of Worlds. I have a Misty Reinforcement. Yeah, um, that's fine. I'm going to play this Misty Rainforest. Yeah. I'm going to fetch. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you play basics? I play one. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to pass the turn. You're, you're fine there. Pass the turn. I'm going to cast a Metallic Mimic. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to enter as a Merfolk. Yeah. Uh, which means I have a plus one, plus one ability here. Yes. That I am going to put on my Hull Breacher. Would you like to respond? Targeting no, the whole creature. That's fine. All right. Uh, I'd like to go to attacks. Yes. <laughs> no. Uh... Seven damage. No blocks. Take seven? Take seven. I go to seven. Uh, I'm going to play a... Uh, glass pool. Glass pool shore tapped. Yeah. And then say go. 
and a turn. I'm going to add three mana to my mana pool uh, with the uh, Toyerian Academy. I'm going to then pay one blue with the Manamo to untap Toyerian Academy. Uh, I'm going to tap it to add another three. So I go up to five blue. Um, and I'm going to go down to one and crack my Inventor's Fair. So I can search my library for any artifact and put it into my hand. Yep. It's like the top card again. Uh, Zuranor. Okay. You certainly have drawn an unusual amount of lands this game. It's been an odd one. It's been an odd game. There's a, there's a, like the obvious line here is Wheeler can gain a bunch of life, but there's also a cool line where now Wheeler can triple Academy. Academy, untap Academy, sack, replay Academy. Yeah. So, uh, hate that for me. Uh, untap. Yeah. <clears throat> Draw for turn. Yeah. Fast bond. No! No! Why are you playing fast bond? It's, this card's busted. Didn't you know? I was trying to get it off the points list for years. Classic Wheeler, fast bond to zero. <sighs> well, that's game. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm gonna play this and. Yeah, so Wheeler can make infinite life. And then off of Infinite Life, we already talked about how you can generate extra mana with the Talarian Academy. So because it produces more than one land, mm -hmm. he can tap it over and over and over with infinite mana, already has a win condition with the yeah. Walking Ballista, which is very frustrating there. So the things that I was playing around, I had a Spell Pierce and an Unsummon. Oh, okay. And I was trying to trying to find moments to get there, the mm -hmm. Otawara. So I had a very interesting hand. Um, and I think maybe the part I screwed up was turn one, maybe I was supposed to Spell Pierce instead of Daze. Because then turn two, I could have Silver Gale ad adapted, yeah. and then had days up to deal with something else. Right. So, th and that was the sequencing I got wrong with that leading with the island. The other thing I could have led with was the Glass Pool Shore, but then I couldn't spell yeah. Pierce okay. or Days on turn one. So the line I was trying to go through there from the very beginning was like, how do I keep the perfect balance of disruption and early pressure there? I like leading with the. Island. Yeah. And I actually think I like keeping up. I like how you played that because yeah. Spell Pierce is like my. Some of my early turns are really tight with how I'm sequencing. Yeah. But the only opportunities I had were <laughs> your egg. Your egg was the only Spell Pierce target I had. Odawara was an activated ability, couldn't hit that. Mm -hmm. Inventor's Fair was an activated ability, couldn't hit that. Uh, you had a billion mana when you finally cast Fast Bond yep. and, and Zurin Orb, so I couldn't hit that. Can't spell Pierce. <laughs> yeah, so there's maybe a weird turn where when I've got you on back to basics, I, I, like, I bounce your Walking Ballista just to apply a bit more pressure, and I'm trying to bait some activations out at mm -hmm. some points there. I do like, Not in my disruption lined up. I do like Fading Hope. I think I if you have a moment with back to basics, I like bouncing this, because yeah. that just... I was keeping it alive because I need the artifacts for this and yeah. for my Inventor's Fair. Yeah, and it does tax you a little bit on that, and it gets me one scry, mm -hmm. which technically gets me one card deeper. Like, the turn I played Metallic Mimic instead of replaying Back to Basics, it didn't really matter at that turn. I was going to use it as an opportunity to get myself up one more mana. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, fun games. Oof. Dang. I mean, it's it's actually kind of bittersweet to die to infinite life off of off of a fast spawn loop. Like I I don't I have no bad beats with that yeah, one. This this deck has always played Zurin Orb just because oh, yeah. it's a zero mana artifact. It works with your second sunrises. It works great with second sunrise, yeah. And then when the lands mid range decks became more popular, I added Crucible uh, and for the blue matchup as a way to like grind them out and also mm -hmm. get this back. Uh, and then Fastbond got off the points list. I mean, this was a while by now. I'm like, eh, 
Is that worth playing? It's like, yeah. I'll just yeah. Play. yeah. It's good with draw sevens. It's I didn't even with... think you had fast spawn in hand when you tutored for, tutored for Zero Norb. Like that card, Zero Norb is just good in that yeah. situation, right? Yeah, it Cause... works well against back to basics. Yeah. Keeps me alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dang. Well, my friends, GG. What a GG. great series. That's going to do it for the showdown today, friends. Thank you very much. Again, if you have any questions about our lists, you can see the uh, link keys in the description below. A reminder that everything we do is brought to you by you, the support of the Patreon over at patreon.com slash run. And also, this is YouTube. Like, follow the channel, like and subscribe, do all that stuff. Engage with us in the comments. Tell us matchups you want to see in the future. Oh, yeah. Talk about how handsome Wheeler is, you know, the usual oh, yeah. sort of stuff like that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I've been Serge, this is the wonderful Wheeler, and we will see you next time.